Hey guys, this is Dr. Simran and I'm up here with a new video after so long. So this video is going to be all about the master plan for USMLE step one. So this master plan has been created by me for six months. So all those who have their exams in the upcoming six months would be very much beneficial from this master plan. All right, so let us discuss how to proceed ahead with the master plan. First of all, we should remember that USMLE is not easy, but it's not undoable for sure. You will, you know, listen to many people saying that you, you know, cannot crack USMLE exams because they are very tough. But remember, it's not undoable. You can do it just with the right mindset. You can clear these exams. All right. So the first step for the beginners, here we are talking about the beginners. So first of all, remember that you should be sure that you really want it. So a lot of DMs on my Instagram account, you guys ask me that how did you choose this journey? Why did you take these exams? The first and the foremost answer is that I wanted it. I knew it. I was sure about it since the second year of MBBS. Since the second year of med school, I was very much sure about it. Okay. Now, if you have just entered the med school or even if you have graduated, make sure you are doing this for yourself. Okay. Make sure that this is your inner call. Because you don't have to be in the rat race. You don't have to follow what others are doing. Only if it is coming from within, then only it is going to make a difference. Otherwise, you will just lose your time and you won't be able to prepare for it wholeheartedly. Now coming on to the next point. See, I have seen many people getting influenced by others. They follow them not knowing what they themselves want, right? This is what is happening with majority of us. We follow others. We don't even know what we ourselves want. So the first step is the toughest choice, all right? The choice between the staying in your home country and pursuing medicine, all right? And the second choice is going to the U.S., for the residency. So you have two choices. Now coming on to the next thing. See, if you want to stay in your home country, for example, India, you need to pass the respected country's medical entrance exam, right? Now we have NEET PG, we have FMG exams, but in the coming time, we will have next examination also, right? And get that MD. But if you want to go to US, for residency, you need to clear all these steps. Step one, C, uh, step one, step two, CK. Now this step two, CS is abolished permanently. It's gone. All right. It's gone permanently. So you have to clear step one, step two, CK, USMLE step three, which can also be taken during the residency. But to make your CV strong, you should take step three before that. And you have to clear few pathways. Since step two CS has been cancelled, you will have to clear few pathways that they have. Okay. You'll get to know about these pathways when you visit the ecfmg.org website. All right. Now, after even after passing the steps, you will have to pass the interviews also. And then you have to appear for the match. And match uses a software, right? And if you get matched, you will start your residency. So this is the way by which you can, you know, choose which exam is much easier for you and what you really want. Now, I know... It is easier said than done. But since I have cleared these steps, so I know that it is nothing very, very difficult. 
it's doable all right now i can understand the dilemma but the best way is to close your eyes and think what your heart really wants for me it had always been easy since the very first day of med school i don't know from where this idea emerged in my mind that i have to go to us this is the most honest thing that i'm telling you that since the very first day of med school i don't know what clicked in my mind i was like i want to go to us to complete my residency this feeling came in my mind so i worked only towards a single target okay remember you should work towards only a single target you should not be sailing in two boats because ultimately what happens is you are not able to do any one of them right so the first step was to make sure if you really want it now coming on to the second step now since you have decided that you want to go to us for residency choose your timeline this is the second very important step you have to choose your timeline now we know that timeline differs for each one of us right if you have decided about usmle in the first year of med school then the best time to appear for step 1 is the third year of med school it is the best time to appear for step 1 because you are done with the first year of med school the basics the second year as well right now if you have decided in the final year of med school or during the internship then after graduation is a good time because we are left with no choice now right okay now coming on to next thing the third step is creating an ecfmg id okay remember this is going to be a very important identification number so please don't lose it the next step is to create an ecfmg id now coming on to the fourth step complete and get your application verified so once you get your ecfmg number you will start filling up your application form for step 1 okay and then you'll get to know which all documents you need okay for example i needed form 186 for my verification the dean's letter and all those uh, documents like transcripts med school performance evaluation form so these were all needed okay so get your form 186 or any form that is needed for the verification that you would get to know once you start your applying right letter from dean etc now coming on to the fifth step now what are the documents that are needed for usmle step 1 application first and the foremost thing you need a valid passport all right you need a dean's letter you need a verification form filled out you need med school transcripts you need med school performance evaluation form so you might be wondering what is med school performance evaluation form so this is a form that consists of the total number of hours that you worked in each department all right supposing when you had your medicine postings how many hours you worked in that posting when you had your surgery postings obviously from the second year of med school we begin to have our rotations so the total number of hours spent in each department in a cumulative result that has to be written in that med school evaluation performance form all right now coming on to the next step the next step is by first aid for usmle step 1 i cannot emphasize enough on this step this is such an important step for you all right you have to get the pathoma video lectures and book you can see how this pathoma book looks like and you have to subscribe to u word for step 1 for 6 months yes i am saying it for 6 months why not 3 months why not monthly because the 6 month subscription comes with a reset option 
you can save all your flashcards all right so once you are done with the first reading of your word you can easily reset the whole your word all right so and plus one more thing it is cost effective also it is cost effective now this is the interface on which your word works it is quite similar to how the actual exam appears the interface is quite similar all right now coming on to the seventh step the seventh step the next step is get your first aid punch hold and arrange it in a ringed folder so you can see this image that i am showing here so this is my own first aid i have arranged my first aid in a ringed folder okay i got it punched hold and i arranged it in a folder the very purpose of arranging it in a folder was to add more pages so you can add more pages and annotate easily supposing you solved one nbme and you find this thing is not given in first aid so you can add that thing into the first aid because since the space is not enough in first aid you can add that you can write that on an a4 sheet and add it in your first aid right now coming on to the next step you get the post it flags the very benefit of using the post it flags is that you can easily find out as you can see in these images i have used the post it flags you can easily find out where that topic is without wasting any time all right and you can divide your first aid system wise also now coming on to the next step choose a topic read it from the first aid watch the video from youtube or pathoma youtube my favorite channel is osmosis okay you can watch the video from youtube or pathoma then add points given in the pathoma which are not given in first aid all right so you add those points from pathoma in first aid so this is known as annotating your first aid this is known as annotating your first aid after that after reading one topic intensively from the first aid as well as the pathoma you're going to solve the u word block of 20 questions once you are done with the system okay supposing you have started microbiology only when you are done with the microbiology then only you're going to touch the u word not before that because otherwise you'll get frustrated all right mark the questions that you did wrong for example in this question okay you can see this option that is showing you the marked option right so you can mark this question if you are doing it wrong for a later on review see marking questions will help you to filter the questions that you did wrong and will help you in the quick revision now if you feel that few high yield facts are not given in the first aid add that stuff in the first aid from the u word okay the 10th step is now you will have a consolidated book known as the annotated first aid this is going to be your lifeline very important for step 1 all right now next step is to set a target to complete the first reading of first aid along with u word okay make a target of 4 months 4 months is a sufficient time for the first reading of first aid and u word okay the order in which you should go ahead is first of all start with general pathology i am emphasizing enough on this point start your preparation with general pathology from the first aid and before sleeping listen to pathoma lectures after the general pathology proceed to microbiology okay in the next video i am going to tell you how to read each system so since microbiology is a system which is underestimated a lot so in the next video i am going to tell you how to read microbiology and other systems 
I hope you like this video. So please do let me know in your comments if you like these videos. I would try to make more of them. And if you are interested in these step one classes, you can you know contact me on my email yourfamilystar23 at gmail.com. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.